Okay, my, my uh, charge is to, is to uh, attempt to answer the question, devices, are they glaucoma's future? And uh, I, I have been a, a proponent of devices really for my whole career in ophthalmology, uh, which uh, uh, is, is longer uh, than I would like to admit. Uh, but I, I've been involved, uh, I, I've been using the, the express shunt for about six months, and, and now I'm, I'm doing all of my trabeculectomies with it. And one of the reasons is that I believe in devices, and I believe that they are the future of, of glaucoma, and that it's very important to be part of, of, of this uh, movement, in a sense. If we think about glaucoma surgical innovation over the last decade, almost all of the time, thought, and venture capital have been devoted to internal drainage technologies. And these are very exciting, but they have not really delivered the consistent pressure lowering that we need. And so when you return uh, and you're doing glaucoma next week, you're going to be doing a trabeculectomy. And so the question is, can a device improve trabeculectomy? And a part of the answer to this question is, why has the Express become so popular? And, and it's been obvious that it's really catching on. Because although we hate blebs, a hole in the eye is still the best pressure-lowering operation. And a device can try to incorporate many of the goals we try to achieve with wound construction and sutures. We can standardize, standardize the technique, we can minimize the incisions, and we can get more predictable flow. If we think about the goals of, of glaucoma surgery, we want it to be effective, safe, fast, minimal follow-up, and no interference with cataract surgery, and also no barrier to presbyopia and astigmatism correcting IOLs. And this is something that, that we may not think much about, the, uh, the cataract surgery issue. But if we think about trabeculectomy, is it effective? Yes, it certainly is effective. But for everything else, no. It's not safe. It's not fast. There's too much follow-up. And it does interfere with cataract surgery and the new technology lenses. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the uh, cataract surgery issues because it's probably something that you've not heard about. The idea is that we don't want to rule out the use of premium lenses. And, and yet, a trabeculectomy seems to be almost an insurmountable barrier to the use of these lenses because of too much astigmatism. And, and this is a problem of the technique. With a large scler scleral incision and a hole in the eye and a large, deep scleral flap, we're, 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 we're going to get way too much astigmatism. This is you know, a, a very large flap, big hole. And, and that's going to be a, a problem for these lenses. We know that new cataract technology, whether it's FACO or lens implants, often takes years to reach glaucoma patients. And this is reasonable at first because these patients are higher risk. But eventually, all breakthroughs are fully applied to glaucoma patients. And we, we should keep in mind that the goal of glaucoma surgery is not really to lower the pressure, or not just to lower the pressure. It's about preserving clear vision. And, and glaucoma patients want to, want to see clearly without glasses, just like everyone else. <clears throat> Current trabeculectomy technique often sets up an axis of evil for astigmatism. With the large scleral incision, the deep scleral flap, and the low pressure, it's just too much for the eye to overcome in terms of having clear vision. And these are not going to be candidates for the uh, new technology lenses, and, and they're not going to have good vision. And we, we've sort of put up with this, in a sense, because we've, we've treated glaucoma patients, in a sense, as second-class citizens. And this is something that, that I've always felt that I was in, and advocate for glaucoma patients because I think they deserve the same sort of, of, of things that everybody else uh, has access to. And this is where the Express comes in and, and devices in general, when we don't have as much of a scleral incision, make the smallest possible incision, we're going to have less astigmatism, not having the iridectomy, and it's going to be more compatible with a uh, cataract operation, we're going to have happier patients, they're going to have better vision. 
And now I want to move on to, to the second part of my talk, and that is to talk about the future, because that's, that's one of the major advantages of, of devices, is the ability to improve. I, I've been doing trabeculectomy now for 25 years. My pointer just, there we go. And, and it's, it seems to me almost unimprovable. Uh, we, we don't have any convergence of technique. Everybody does it a little bit differently. We cut the holes out differently, the flap is different, the, the sutures are different. I was asked recently by Glaucoma Today to write an article about fornix versus limbus-based flaps. And I, I uh, said that I didn't really have much to say about that, and I said that the, the first paper that had been written comparing those two techniques was written by a friend of mine, Jerry Schuster, when he was a fellow in St. Louis. And it turned out that Jerry was, um, had, had just retired. And so for the 25 years from when he wrote the, that paper to when he retired, uh, not much had really been settled about that, and they wanted me to write a paper about it. And I'm saying, gee whiz, uh, it seems like we should have figured that out by now. And yet, we, we still are kind of going in a circle with the trabeculectomy. And that's where the express is, is, is such a step forward, because it provides a platform for improvement. We, we have a uh, much more potential for innovation, and now convergence is possible. We have goals that are much more, much more clear. We know that to advance filtering surgery, we want a smaller incision. We want the fewest number of sutures. And we should take a clue from cataract surgery and, and, and take the attitude that a suture is a failure in design or engineering. That, the, that we should always be thinking, why do we need that suture? And then ultimately, we want adjustable leakage. And if we look at how uh, people have tried to solve these problems or move forward with a non-device trabeculectomy, Peng Ka has probably worked the hardest at, at achieving this, and he has an operation that requires a 10 millimeter conjunctival flap, four to six mattress sutures to close it, a seven millimeter scleral flap to make a one or two millimeter hole, six or seven sutures to close the flap, slip knots that then you adjust post-op in, in your post-op uh, adjustment period. So he's tried to do this, achieve better efficacy and safety by making a much bigger operation. And that's where the, the Express offers an, an alternative uh, uh, opportunity with a goal being a minimal scleral flap, just enough to cover the device. And I'm talking about future developments of the device. And so instead of having, you know, a, a uh, relatively larger flap, we would hopefully one day have a smaller flap. And this type of minimal scleral flap with one or even no sutures is only possible with a device. We could never do that with a trabeculectomy uh, operation. And then someday, I personally would really like to see leakage that was adjustable. And again, this kind of control is only possible with a device. So. We're looking ultimately for uh, even greater improvements from the express device platform, shorter surgery, and we have the chance to eliminate steps, better endpoints, so that we don't anymore have a situation where we put a stitch in and we say, oh, gee, that's too much leakage, or oh, no, it's not enough leakage. We can just set it and forget it, and we can make the operation smaller rather than larger. So what we're seeing currently is, is, is the rise of the express, and trabeculectomy is being driven out not only by bleb side effects and the other uh, problems we have with, with that technique, but also by astigmatism. And the express, without needing to make a hole, without the iridectomy, being a faster operation with less follow-up, and having more compatibility with premium lenses. Because in surgery, efficacy is the uh, force of gravity. And just to wrap it up here, uh, a, a trabeculectomy, 
device like the Express gives us hope because surgery should become more streamlined, smaller, not, not bigger. Cataract surgery has done this. And so ultimately, uh, we, we know that a hole in the eye still is the best way to go, but a device like the Express can improve every aspect of this operation. And this is a story that's just beginning. Thank you very much.